today about walking by faith and not by sight. And I want, I want to tell you, I want to share it with you. Some of you are going to find it more difficult to go along with what we're doing if you're going to walk in your natural man. The Bible is clear that the natural man cannot walk spiritually. He cannot understand nor discern spiritual things. The things of God are spiritual. The word of God is spiritual. It cannot be, you cannot intellectualize the word of God. You may have the ability to memorize the scripture. You may have the, the, the ability to even give semantics, even give words to the scripture and not be a believer. Just be, uh, just have mental assent. You just, uh, you just agree mentally. But it hasn't been enough agreement for you to change your life. You're still living in the old man. And as we've learned over the last several weeks from, from myself and from our guest speakers, that there's no promises in the old man. All of the promises are in the new creation man. The, the, the place where everything has become new. Come on, I'm talking to you. So it's important for us as a people to ask God for a mind shift. God, oh, Lord, help me. I used, I used to think like this, Lord. But now I know I need to think like this. Let this mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus. In other words, I need to have a Savior's mind for me to walk in my new man. I need to have the Savior's vision. I need to see what my Savior sees to be able to walk in this new vision, this new place, this new creation. I'm tired of the old hat. I'm tired of the old attitudes and the old things going in circles and never being satisfied and never being fulfilled. I thought Christianity was supposed to be something wonderful. It's just been one trial after one trial after one trial. Where is the joy of my salvation? Where is this Lord that can do everything and has all power? How come I'm not realizing it? How come I'm not sensing it? How come I don't feel it? How come I'm not experiencing it right now? Well, let's look at what the word of the Lord says to this morning as we come to this lesson that's in my spirit. Let's see what the Lord's going to say to us this morning. Are you okay? Hallelujah to God. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for uh, the, um, one of the things that we, we talked about uh, several weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, at the, at the conference at Pastor Blackman's was uh, Dr. Willie Nutt taught probably one of the greatest messages I heard on how to receive uh, your faith that, that, that actually takes the blessing uh, that the Lord is giving. You know, I can offer you a whole bunch of things, but unless you take it, and we like to we like to play around with words that Christian people do. We say, well, you put your hand out like this. You can't take nothing like this. Well, you, you like you beg it. You put your hand out, and you put something in my hand. It doesn't matter what it is. It's more than what I got right now. Just give me something. But when the Bible talks about taking from the Lord, it's talking about, hold this elder for me. It's talking about taking it. Taking it. Possessing it, seizing it by faith. Not talking about waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting on God. You're going to wait and you're going to die and you're not going to have anything he's promised you. He does not give us something because we're waiting on it. He gives it to us when we take it. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I'm going to give you evidence. I'm not just talking. And so it's important for us to change our mind about begging and always being with hand out. Get ready to take. Go in and possess what God has promised us. Come on, it's time, it's time for you to possess your healing. The, the prophets have come, the people have come, they got gifts and miracles in their lives, and you didn't get one. And you're not getting, you're not getting it. You're not receiving it. Why? Because you, you're waiting for it to be delivered. Here, here it is, drop it in your lap. No, you gotta take it. You gotta learn how to seize things from God. You gotta seize them. Amen. Some of you waiting to be delivered. Well, I stop smoking when the Lord delivers. The Lord's never going to deliver you from smoking. You got you to hate it first. You got to hate it. And when you hate it, you won't do it anymore. I said, when you hate something, you're not going to do it. I hate, I hate onions in my soup. 
I'm not eating onions in my soup. Why? Because I hate it. Sister told me the other day, I don't like mayonnaise. Not putting no mayonnaise on my food. So she's not going to be caught ever eating what? Mayonnaise. Why? She, can't, she hates it. So I'm saying to you and I'm saying to Pastor Cal, well, why don't you hate sin? And, and don't put that on your sandwich no more. <laughs> See, whatever you hate, you won't do it. But if you find some satisfaction in what you're doing and some pleasure in it, you always have a temptation to go back and to do that. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because hoping, I want to be delivered. No, you don't want to be delivered because you still got the cigarettes in your pocket. Smoke one on the way in. Am I on you? I'm on you because it's time for us to move on. I've been nice enough about it. It's time for you to stop talking about it. Getting something from God and seize it. And take it. It's time to move on. This is the word, church. We're giving you the word. The word. People are coming in. George was in there with the word. Prophet Rob was in there with the word. John Harkey was here with the word. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. The word. Now seize it. Take it. It's time to walk in it. It's time to walk in it. It's time for your job. Quit talking about you want a job and go get the job. Seize the job. Go get it. Quit waiting for somebody to give you something. Go get it. Get up and go get it. Come on, people of God. Get up. I right, look. Check this out. When you're sitting up, you're watching television, right? You're sitting back there, and your stomach goes. Rrr. What do you do? You get up to the refrigerator. Yes, you do. You get on up, and you go and you you go to that place where you know that. Grumbling's going to be satisfied. You go up and you go to the refrigerator. And you, what do you do? You open the door. Yes, you do. And you look in there with great desire to fulfill your pleasure. Yes, you do. And so all God is saying is that my word has been open to you like the refrigerator door. Now take the promise. Possess it and take it. Are you listening to me? Now watch this. Amen. The Bible says that God, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, is the author and the finisher of our faith. Did you hear that? He's the author and the finisher of our faith. That means he, he is the beginning. He, he, says, he says that I gave each of you the, the measure, the measure of faith. The measure. So each of us have the same measure with a different assignment on your measure. Your, your, your measure is to bring you to the fullness of God in terms of your assignment in the kingdom. My measure is to bring me to the fullness of God in, 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 in terms of the assignment of, of, of the kingdom that's on my life. Now watch this. Now for that, for that faith to come to fullness, it has to be trialed. It has to be tried. So he allows the trials of your faith. And, and the trials of your faith are to develop your faith muscle to be able to walk by faith and not by sight. So each time you go experiencing something, you're experiencing it to further you on in the trial in developing his faith that he gave you. You don't have any faith of your own. You live by the faith of the Son of God. He gave you a measure of his faith. So you don't have to go to another faith conference to appropriate somebody else's faith. You've got to develop the faith that God has placed in your life. He, each of you should stop feeling sorry for yourself because every one of you has been given the measure. The measure of what? Of faith. To what? That's going to be exercised through the trials of your faith to bring you up to a place of maturity to walk in the promises that your faith is leading you to. To walk to fulfillment in the thing. Say, well, I haven't been healed. Well, your faith is going to lead you. It's going to lead you to your healing if you follow on by faith. We've come this far by faith. Not our faith. We've come this far by the faith of the Son of God who died for me. The life I now live, I live by what? Divine faith. Faith of the creator God. The faith that created the universe has been deposited in me in a measure to inside of me. Just like I told the prayer group on Prayer Mountain, how dare you act like a beggar when you are a nuclear weapon. You are a weapon of mass destruction in prayer. When you open up your mouth and you say in the name of Jesus, every devil in hell is trembling. The powers of hell have 10.9 earthquakes every time a saint prays. 
You don't know who you are. You're a weapon of mass destruction. You're not some beggar waiting for somebody to do something for you. You speak and the angels of heaven begin to move on behalf of the word of God. And the power of God is wrought in the life of a Christian that has the word of God in his mouth. You are a weapon of mass destruction against the enemy. Against the powers of darkness. You are a weapon. Quit acting like a wimp. And you are a weapon. When you speak, the angels are waiting to see if you'll stand. After you've done all you know how to do, will you stand in the power of his might? Weapons. Not wimps. Weapons. Not victims. Victorious. Amen. He said, one of you can put a thousand demons to fly. One of you. Two of you, it, gets, it begins to increase. That's the power of a weapon that's not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down. Of, and see, if you see us, if you don't see yourself right, you can't live this life right. You got to see yourself as who God created you to be. More than a conqueror. Can do all things through Christ. Come on. Come on, I said, come on. Come on, I, I can. If you knew, you know what's so cool about it? You can be a weapon and to be like that nuclear plant in, in Japan. When the storm came, instead of the nuclear plant being able to function in the storm, it began to leak. The, nuclear, the, the, the radiation began to leak in the water and it began to leak because it wasn't built right for the storm. But when God built you, he built you with the storm in mind so that your power don't leak and begin to affect people in a negative way. This power is not for negativity. This power is the power and the positive power of God that he's given the people. Don't look in the mirror and say who you are. Look in the word and find out who you are. The mirror doesn't reflect the real you. It only reflects the house that you live in. You can't see you inside of you. You're a spirit that has dominion. You have the voice of the Father. You have the spirit of God. You have the word of God. You have the blood of God. You have, come on, you have the will of God. There's no reason in the world you can't have dominion. Are you listening to this message this morning? I want you to listen to me. It's time to advance against the kingdom of darkness. And you can't advance unless you have words of advancement in your mouth. You have to speak the thing that you want. I'm not getting amens from this message. Instead of settling for things that you see. Settling for where you are. Settling for what you have. And don't misunderstand Paul when he says, I'm content. Whether I'm abased or whether I'm abound, he's found to be content. That's not what I'm talking about. Paul was a pioneer. You're not a pioneer. Paul was a pioneering the church. It was in its embryo stages. He was following a new thing called the way. It was called the way. It wasn't called Christianity then. It was called the way. And he was following this church. And so he was setting up biblical principles in their life that they could live by. So you can't be Paul because you're not pioneering anything. Come on, you're in a place that's already been pioneered. Come on, it's already been established. You're in a kingdom that already is. Come on, it's already been established in you. Paul was establishing the kingdom. You've been in church 15, 20 years. Kingdom has been established by now. Come on, somebody. This is not the beginning. We're not new believers. We've been believing for a long time. But we now we got to stop believing. And now we have to know that we know that we know that we know that what we have believed must manifest in our lives now. We believe long enough, doggone it. Come on, I say we believe. Now, when is something going to manifest? When do we get the fruit of our labor? When do we get to walk in what God has promised us? Now we're going to walk in it is what I'm trying to get you to see. Wake up in here and hear your man of God talk to you. Amen. Amen. Today's the day. Glory to God. Come on, I'm going to uh, I take you here. I'm trying my best to be, Lord, oh, my Father. Oh, my goodness. Let me take you to this Romans chapter 2. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you something in the tabernacle, and then we're going to stop. I got to show you this thing. Walking by faith and not by sight. Walking by faith and not by sight. Amen. There's so many people in the church walking by sight. Hallelujah. Are 
Are you there in Romans chapter 12? Did I say two? Okay, please forgive me. And go to 12. That's because I'm excited. 12. Okay. Here's what it says. I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto uh, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then he goes on in verse 2 and says this, Be not what? Conformed to this world. Did you hear that? Don't, don't get conformed to this world. And we just disobey this. We, don't even, we act like this scripture is not in the Bible. It says, don't be like the world. It says, don't be like the world. That's what it says. <laughs> it says to fashion like in the same pattern of the world. To conform one's mind and character to another pattern rather than that of God, which is the world. The world's not of God. The world belongs to the prince of the power of the air, to the God of this world. This is his world, people of God. This arrangement that you see, the government and the way things are, and how things are being presented, it's being presented in a worldly arrangement. That means it's not, it, come on, it's not, this is not how the kingdom of God is in heaven. This is the way man has established it in the earth, anti-Jesus in the earth. So he says, don't get conformed to anti-Jesus system and try to find your place in the anti-Jesus place. The reason you're unhappy is because you're trying to be happy in the un-Jesus place. The reason you're not fulfilled because you're trying to be fulfilled in the ungodly system. When I told you, seek me first in my kingdom and my righteousness, and I would add to the, to the kingdom and not the ungodly kingdom, but to the righteousness. I'm not going to bless an unrighteous thing and make you prosper in unrighteous thing until you prosper in righteousness. Yes, I know you must prosper in the unrighteous. God's not crazy, but why would he allow you to prosper in unrighteousness and you won't come and comply with righteousness in the kingdom? Come and can I talk to you? I'm going to show you this thing, people of God. God's not a respecter. He doesn't want to bless this person over here and leave you out. He wants to bless the body of Christ. He wants to bless no respecter person. I want everyone to be blessed. I want all of us to come to the city. And I want all of you to walk in a prosperity and an understanding. And I want you all to walk in fulfillment. I want you all to have. He said, but all of you won't. But I want, I want you to. I want you to be whole. I want you to prosper. I want you to have... He, matter of fact, every desire you have, God downloaded it into. When you came into the kingdom, he began to download his vision in you for what you're doing right now. That's not your vision. People say, but this is my angel vision. God downloaded that because you're a vessel. It's like I have a computer. My computer don't have any vision. I go out and buy the software. I download it. Now it does what I tell it to do. I paid for that program, and I downloaded that program. God said, I bought you with a price. You're not your own. Now I'm downloading my stuff in your spirit. I'm downloading visions. I'm downloading dreams. I'm downloading provision. I'm down Everything that I'm going to do for you, I have to download in you. Then I have you to get to speak it out so it manifests in your realm where you live, where I've given you dominion. All spiritual blessings are in heavenly places. How do I get them down? I download them into you, and then you speak them out, and they manifest. Everything from the very beginning was spoken into being. God said, let there be. He said, you're in my image and my likeness. I'm giving you dominion over the earth. So if you want something to come forth in your life, I download it into your spirit. You pray in tongues and then I give you the word and you speak it out. And next thing you know, you're walking in the thing I told you about. That I downloaded in your spirit. When grandma was praying for Joseph, she was saying, I want my grandson saved. I want my grandson saved. I see my grandson saved. I want my grandson saved. God said, okay, I downloaded that vision in you. Come on, somebody. I downloaded that vision in you. I downloaded that revelation in you. And now she stood up here this morning with her grandson. Come on, call you talking to me. It manifested the thing that she desired in her heart. It manifested. We used to have to try to find JoJo. We couldn't find JoJo. He'd be missing in action. 
And Adriana, Alexandra would call me, Pastor, I don't know where he's at. I said, God knows where he's at. Bless God. The angels are searching the whole earth to and fro. They know where everything is at. They want to know what's in your mouth. What's going to come out of your mouth? Negativism or the word of God? You got a choice. I am actually getting away from negative people. I don't even want to be around ugly, negative people. It scares me how you can be in the Holy Ghost and be negative. That may not be the Holy Ghost you're in the presence of. You may have been so negative, a negative spirit came and said he was the Holy Ghost. And you think that your spirit you're in is the Holy Ghost when it's not the Holy Ghost. It might be Casper. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, are, are you, can I finish with this thing? Well, I want to show you this. This is so powerful. I, I'm charged. So be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. The word transform is the word metamoro or metaphoro which means uh, to transform literally and figuratively, to change into another form, to transform into to what? To Christ's appearance was changed and was replendent, divine brightness in the form. But you know what it really means? It means that when we're transformed, we're not transformed, disconnect. Listen to this, this is gonna be so powerful. I want you to see this. We have the, we have the idea that we come into church and we just do our own, well, I, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And I don't know what everybody else. But when God talks about transforming, he's talking about for the body of Christ. That's all of us together. Not you by yourself and me left out. But he's talking about the body of Christ. He said that we're supposed to all be transformed by the renewing of the same word. That's why I tell people, don't go to other Bible studies. You haven't learned the word I'm teaching yet. You, how did you get so deep that you can get so much word and you ain't obeyed the word in this house yet? Come on, people. God, why are we so... You know, you, there's only one head over... How many heads you have on your body? One. And how much direction do you get from that head? All the direction. You don't have two heads talking about, well, don't trust this head. Listen to this head today. That's those foolishness that we brought into the kingdom of God. And trying to act like we're mature. Well, I'm going over there. They have a now word. You have no now word. And I can see it if you were living in the word here and you were flourishing in the word here and you just were doing everything that we've taught you here. Go on, go what you got to go. You prove that you're a mature saint. But you have not doing that. I'm not hearing anybody say anything now. People crack me up. Well, I, I just feel, you, you're feeling. You're not supposed to be walking by feelings. That's what happened to Adam and Eve when they feel God. said, where are you, Adam? Where are you, Eve? He says, well, we're hiding. He said, well, why are you hiding? Because we're naked. Well, he said, who told you you're naked? He says, I'm afraid. He got off in his feelings. The moment he got out of the spirit, he was walking in his feelings. Walking in his soul. Could no longer walk by the spirit. He was a suke man rather than a, a numa. Zoe, man. We got so many suitcases, people in the kingdom of God. Not in our church, because I, I search high and low. I don't see any soulish people in our church. Everybody here is walking in the Holy Spirit. But in other places where I go. Are you okay? Come on. And so it's important for us not to walk by feelings, not to make decisions based on how you feel. Make based feelings on the word of God. What does the word of God say? And feelings have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. You got saved out of your soul. Your soul needed to be saved. Matter of fact, your soul's not even totally saved, even though it is saved. It's being brought on to salvation, according to the Thessalonians. It says that I, the will of God is that you be, uh, what? It, uh, it says the will of God is that you be sanctified uh, body, soul, and spirit. And brought unto blameless, if I'm blameless, until the coming of Christ and being preserved and found blameless unto the coming of Christ. It didn't say until, it says unto 
So as we come, as Christ, and we come, see, we're going to Christ by faith, and he's coming to us by grace. Now, I'm going to help you. Grace is not unmerited favor the way it's been taught in the church. I'm going to help you. Grace means now, God, it, yes, it is unmerited favor because you don't deserve anything. It's unmerited. Jesus is the only reason why you're getting it. You don't deserve anything. If you got what you deserve, you'd be dead and burning in hell. So none of us are getting what we deserve. So grace doesn't mean doing things uh, of unmerited favor for you to do things your way. Grace means that now that you've come into grace, I give you the ability, watch this, to do things that my will of God in your life call for you to do that bring pleasure to me and bring joy to my heart. See, what you've been doing all your life is doing things that brought pleasure to you and joy to your heart. But now he gives you grace to forget about you. Oh, Lord, and concentrate on him. Now, that's grace. See, now you're not thinking about you anymore. And now he's giving you the ability to be an ambassador of the kingdom and to do things his way. That's grace. That's unmerited favor that he gave you to be like him. Because you've been like you so long, you've messed up your whole family. Now he wants you to be like him, and he calls that unmerited favor. You don't deserve to be like me. But I died for you to be like me. That's unmerited favor. That's grace. We've taken and said, well, if you're sleeping around and you mess up, just call on that grace. That's a lie. When you're doing that, you have to repent. You don't call on grace. You repent before the Lord. See, we got this thing being taught in a backwards way. That you can just go do what you want and everything. No. The grace was given to you to do things God's way. With God's spirit and God's mind and God's word. That's grace. That he gives you an understanding that you've been trying to get. He gives you grace to understand. You're walking to him by faith. Lord, I can't see. So don't worry about it. I'm coming to give you favor. But Lord, I, I, I've never had a job in last He said, don't worry about it. I'm coming to you by grace, and you're walking to me by, by faith. He said, when we kiss, it's going to be a manifestation of the promise. We're going to kiss, Pastor Cal. We're going to poop. And all of a sudden, he goes, my God, Father, all my life I've been wanting this, and there it is in front of my eyes. Oh, my God. He said, that's unmerited favor. That's grace. See, if you get it taught to you sloppy, then you, you'll misappropriate it. Is it Catholic or what's going on? <laughs> Am I teaching or what? Is it, are, you, are you learning something? No, I, I, I got it. Oh my goodness, time is flying on me. Let me get this out. I got to get this out. Watch this. Be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to what? Prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So there's a good will, a perfect will, and acceptable will. Only problem is there's only one will. And God, there's only one will. That's, that's the perfect will. But there are stages that we come into faith, and the first stage is the good. We come, that's the 30-fold. Uh, I'm going to show you what that really means. And then the 60-fold is, is the acceptable and then it says, the perfect will, or the teleos will, or the will for the perfect man in Ephesians chapter 4, the being brought into a perfect man will, is called the perfect will, or the fullness of your faith that brought you to the perfect will of God. Walking by faith and not by sight. I've, I've walked so far by faith, my faith is coming to fullness. It's coming to maturity. My faith has been tried by fire. My faith has been tried by tribulation. My faith has been tried by death. My faith has been, people have been taken away from me. I have been offended in my faith. I have been lied on in my faith. Now I have passed all those tests and my faith has come to fullness now. Now the Father can reveal to me things that eyes cannot see and ears cannot hear and cannot enter into the heart of man. But has been revealed unto us who have come into full faith who love God. Because faith worketh by love. And now that my love is working, my faith has been amplified to give me vision that I couldn't see before, before I came into full faith. Y'all not hearing me. See, what I'm trying to get you to see is you can't see everything God come to has for you because you're not walking. You're walking in 30% of your potential. You're walking in 60%. And if you know anything about God, he doesn't do anything less than 100 
And, and can you see God? Oh, yes, come into heaven and only get 30%. There's no 30% in heaven. Ain't no 60% in heaven. There's only 100. Everything, every seed God had Adam plant brought a hundredfold return. Everything Adam did in that garden brought a hundredfold return. Now watch this. Since Jesus Christ now is the garden of Eden, the new creation place, everything in Christ is 100%. But because we fail from grace and sin entered into the world by one man, sin entered into the world through Adam, we must now recover from the fall. And as we recover, he has stages of growth and recovery that we enter into 30-fold, 60-fold, 100, until we've totally, uh, uh, been totally uh, relieved and healed from sin consciousness and the side effects of our fall. The fall was so great, God had to put re in everything. He says, refresh, recover, renew. Everything had to be redone again because when the first model got messed up, we, come on, when Adam fell, we got blemished with sin. We got scarred in our souls. Come on. And so everything in the New Testament is re, re, refresh, renew, recover, re this, re that. Because why? Because he's putting us back together, jointly fitting us together to walk as the one man Adam again in Christ Jesus. If any man, we'd be a new creation. A new creation is the Son of God manifesting in the earth realm as the church. Now I'm going to show you this thing. And so when you talk about 30-fold, it's not about money. Not 30% you're going to get, you give your offer, you're going to get 30-fold return on your money. That's a lie. And you say you're going to get 60% return on your money. That's a lie. You give, if you give your money and you purpose in your heart as God has prospered you, you get a 100-fold return on your money. And 100 for return don't mean if you put in 10 cents, you're going to get $10 or $100. That's not what he's talking about. He says, based on your heart, as he reads your heart as you give, he don't judge the outward appearance. He judges by the heart. So as you take the money out of your pocket, he's checking your heart, not your wallet. He's not trying to see how much you're giving. He's seeing how much of your heart is in your giving. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He's checking your heart to make sure that he has increased your heart with kingdom so that your giving becomes kingdom giving. He's not counting the dollars and see what 10% means. Well, 10%. He's not doing that. He's checking out your heart to see where it is in, in terms of his kingdom. What does this money mean to you, Pastor Cal, that you're giving? Are you attached to this? Are you, are you connected? Is your affection on this thing here? Or is it set on things above? Is your affection on your wallet, on your checkbook, on the kind of car you drive, where you think you live, or the kind of clothes you wear? Or is, it, or is your heart on the kingdom? He says, when you reach into your resources and you give on Sunday, I'm not counting your money. I'm searching your heart. When you were a drug addict, you gave all your money to the dope dealer and you never worried about it. You didn't care. Go come into church and start acting like, oh, you can't make it. Gave everything to sin. Your whole heart. I wouldn't come home for days. I'd be gone. Up in the hotel, in, in, in El Rancho Hotel, up in Santa Rosa with the Raiders, selling them cocaine. Wife didn't know where I was. And I didn't think nothing about it. She said, where you been? I said, I'd be the man. You think I'm going to come into the kingdom and play around with God? Take everything I got. God don't mean nothing unless you have it. Unless you touch it, it don't mean nothing. It doesn't mean anything unless God touches it, breathes it. Oh, my 
goodness. Somebody said, your wife is a strong woman. She's stronger than you think. She's stronger than you think. You didn't know me. She must have really loved me. Yeah. Yeah. Stay with me. I'll be gone. I'm trying to get my high on. You messing up my high. But God says, no. Look, look at it. I know how much money you make. I know what you have to do to get what you got. But your heart ain't set for my kingdom. And I'm trying to bring you into a place where you don't have to worry about your family. I'll take care of them if you just do what I want you to do. If you just obey me, I'll take care of the, the in between the lines that you're trying to take care of. You see? As long as you have to micromanage, you're just going to barely gonna be getting by. I got 14 minutes to say what I got to say. So let me put up that first, uh, uh, excuse me, can I have your attention please? Would you put up that first tabernacle picture that I brought you? Sure. Let me show you this thing. There it is. Now what I want you to see there, in, in the, this side, on this side, is outside of that is the 30 fold that's the that's the 30 percent that's the outer court where the cross is and calvary and the water the water bowl and everything's made out of brass now watch this what god is saying to the church listen to me he said i want you as people of dominion at genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28 i gave you to have dominion over the earth that's the outer court the cross gives you power to come back into dominion and then the water bowl's out there to give you a mind to be able to handle your dominion without being selfish. I, I'm trying to help you understand something. So the 30 fold is not the place of the supernatural. It's the place where your natural man can advance in the world to bring income to take care of your family based on what Jesus did on the cross. Not your education. Don't you ever throw your degrees in the face of God. This has all been given to you by the work of Calvary. You didn't deserve it, but God went and did it for you. Now, all of you have a right to come back into dominion and to be over your circumstances and never under your circumstances. You have a right to have power to get wealth. It's given to you in the outer court. I'm trying to help you in the 30-fold place. Now, watch. Now, we're getting ready to go supernatural. Come on, say supernatural. supernatural. We're going into the holy place. Now, there's a different light in there. There's a candlestick in there. Which means now put down that intellect, put down that cognizant reading, put down your intelligence, and get ready to be enlightened by the spirit of the living God. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? Now you're coming to a place, come on, you're bringing your prosperity from the outward court, the 30-fold, and now you come into 60-fold now. Now God's downloading 60-fold information to you to get you to walk until you're 100. But you have to have, first of all, you have to have dominion in the outer court before you can have, come on, you can learn in the inner court. If you're struggling in the outer court and you got all messed up in the outer court, you won't be able to sit still long enough in the inner court without worrying about what's going on in the outer court. So you have to have victory in the outer court. You have to have peace in the outer court. You have to have joy in the outer court. But that's the place where you come in with thanksgiving. Come on. In the courts with praise. Come on, you're hearing me. So that's the place where you show your thanksgiving and prayer. Then you enter into the worship. You come into your prayer. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You come to the prayer altar, which is the worship altar, the prayer altar, intercessory altar, the candlestick in the table of communion. Now I got to get along with everybody in the body of Christ, no matter what they say or do. I offer you my forgiveness. You can't hurt me. 70 times 70. 70 times 70. 70 times 70. How many times did I forgive my brother? 70 times 70. 70 times. I'm coming to the supernatural now. Now I have the ability to do what Jesus does. To think like Jesus. To walk like Jesus. To pray like Jesus. To commune with Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And then when I've entered into that place, and I've got dominion in the outer court, and I've got, come on, and I've got myself in the right place, in the innermost place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the holy place. My mind's been renewed. Now I walk into the holy 
of holiness. And now it's not my life. The life I now live, I, it's not, I gave up my life. I come, now I can sacrifice my life. I can give up my life. I can trust God. And that's when I come to fullness of faith. Now I can say things and they, I can decree a thing and it shall be established. I can begin to speak things. Cause, oh my God. Because I'm in the place of his voice when he's speaking. I'm in the place of the secret place of the most high God. Go into your closet alone and pray secretly to God. He will reward you openly. This is the place of reward. This is the place of enhancement. This is the place of growth. This is the place of development. This is the hundredfold place. This is the place, come on, I'm here and you not talk to me. He said, first, when you plant the corn, it comes back a blade. You can't eat a blade. Then it comes back a ear. I mean, a blade, it comes back a ear. You can't just eat an ear. But then he says, when you get to the hundredfold, he said, it turns into an ear in the corn. That's, that's now, it's, it's, people can eat that now. That's the hundredfold. God wants us to have dominion in the outer court, people of God. You'll never be at peace in the inner court if you don't have victory in the outer court with your temperament and your attitudes and your little funky little things that you say about people. You got to get victory over that. Then when you come into the church age, you come in to be enlightened and understand and be enlightened by the candlestick. You get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You begin to speak in tongues and you begin to come into the holy love of God. The love of God gets down into the, your bowels. And now when you think about people, you see all their faults, but you look past them to look for their needs. Why? Because you're in a different place now. You're in a different place. You're in this place where you've been developed 60% of your spiritual life. It's been brought up now. Now you're working at, at, at 60 and, and, and you're working in a place of 90 because 60 and 30 is 90. If you go over to the other chamber, it, it was 10 by 10 by 10, which means 1,000. That's the 10% that the church has been missing. That is the actual place of manifestation. Now here's the key to this thing as I close. In this particular picture here, the priest's job wasn't just to go in and stay in there. He had to come out with the influence of his journey. There should be a proof that he had been with God. There should be a proof he had been illuminated by the candlestick. There should be a proof that he had been in prayer with the invisible God. There should be a proof that he loves the body of Christ because he'd been in there with the table of showbread, which is the table of face bread. That's what it says. See, when you get together with the church, that's where you see the face of Jesus. That's why they call it the table of face bread. You can't see God by yourself in the closet getting all deep and holy. You got to get with the body of Christ to see the face. He said the key was not going in. The revelation is coming out and proving to the world that you were in there with him. By the glory that's been revealed. Come on, I'm not hearing what you said. By the life that you're now living. By the level of prosperity that you've come to. By the things that God has done with your life. He's enhanced you. He's made you grow. Now you come out and show the world that Jesus is alive. Are you listening to this? Thing? See, we made this whole church thing a financial transaction. Well, don't even get 30. But you're going to get this offering today. The bigger your offering is, if you give a little bit, you're going to get 30 for return. If you give more to our offering today, you're going to get 16 for return. But if you give the offering I got in my mind that you should give, you're going to get 100 for return. Liar, liar, pants on fire. And the people of God are so naive and so gullible. They think that you can get something and not put nothing in, but just a little offering. You think you can buy your way through this Christian world with an offering without giving your life. No, my children. God said, I want you to walk by faith. You're walking towards me and you're 34. And I'm walking towards you because my vision for you is 104. Don't stop walking because my vision for you is fulfillment that everything 
be fulfilled to the totality of what I set you on the earth to have dominion for. It's a slap in my face for you to settle for less than what I offered you. Take that which I have given you. Don't try to take somebody else's. Just take that what I've given you. Seize it. And quit using excuses about your education and where you come from and what people did to you and all this stuff. It have, everybody has some drama in their life. Some people got molested spiritually. Some people got molested physically. Everybody been molested some way or another. Somebody hated on you and somebody hated on me. Let's get over that. That's why Jesus came. Do we have to build another doctrine just for your trouble that you have? Do we have to open up another healing school, another inner healing? What do we got to do? To get you to walk in the fullness of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Put that next one up, our last one. There it is. What is that, Pastor Cal? That's the tabernacle in the wilderness. And those are the 12 armies that surrounded the center. You see, in the very center, you see the tabernacle. On the outside of the tabernacle, the large a rectangular thing, you see the, the cross of the brazen labor, brazen altar, and that little round thing and dot, that's the brazen labor. So in other words, you get cleansed from sin in the outer court, and you get cleansed from self in the outer court. So the two factors that help your church life be more successful is first of all, not only do you get delivered from the penalty of sin, but you also get delivered from the power of sin. And when you get delivered from the power of sin, then you get delivered of the power of self. See, well, the reason most Christian experiences isn't successful is because of you. You want to be in charge of your walk before God. You want to decide when you go to church and what you do and how much you do. You haven't acknowledged your, yourself to all of his ways. Lean not on your own understanding and he can't not direct your path. And so the Christian dilemma is, not the devil, is that you keep choosing and making choices against God. So what God would do before they could enter into the church realm or to the holy place, they had to deny, they had to be delivered from sin, and they had to be delivered from sin. And when the disciples asked Jesus, what shall we do? He says, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. He would not even let his disciples follow him in their self. He said, you can't follow me and be in yourself. I'm not hearing anybody amen this now. I got a whole bunch of amen a while ago. Yes, I did. Now I mentioned getting rid of you. You're getting mad now. See, now you're mad because I had to tell you that God's not waiting on you to, to do anything. He's waiting on you to deny yourself. It's you that have been lost. It's you that have been rebellion. It's you that will not give. It has been you that has given your wife all the hell you've given her. It's you and your doubt and unbelief that's caused your family not to be able to progress and go forward. It's you that caused strife and division and have your husband groaning at night wondering do you love him. Because of your behavior. have your parents wondering about you and you're out messing around with these 52 venereal diseases they have out here. Got your parents up waiting at night when they're worried about it, you're going to catch one of them. Now watch this. So, so what he did is that he made the army surround the encampment of the talents. In other words, Jesus must always be in the center of your life. If you look at the camp, Jesus is always in the center. But what I want to show you here is everybody in the armies stayed in their place. These are the 12, three armies here, three armies here, three armies here, three armies here. They stayed in their place. Everybody had a place they're supposed to stand. Every, this is Moses and Aaron. This is the rest of the 12 sons, the 12 tribes, the 12 armies. 12 is a number of defense because there were 12 armies that protected the camp. The camp was 12 miles in circumference. So when God called the armies to come together and the princes of the armies to come together and the leaders to come together, they had to wait because some of them had to travel 12 miles to get to the tabernacle. It wasn't just across the street. It was 12 miles away. They had to walk 12 miles because there was 2 million people out there in encampment. 
was 12 miles of circumference. 12 armies protected him. Come on. And everybody had to be in a place. And there was a captain or a prince over every family or a pastor over every family. And they didn't mix families. One pastor shepherded his sheep. The other pastor shepherded his sheep. There wasn't another pastor coming over shepherding other people's sheep. That's not what was going on here. He said, my sheep know my voice. And so there was a shepherd for every fold. Jeremiah 23, 3, God said, I, she I sent a shepherd over the sheep. The sheep don't pick their shepherd. I set shepherds over people. People don't pick their pastors. In this place we live today, but I choose where I go. I go, I go, it, you know, if I like what he's saying, then I, I go. You go where you've been assigned to go. The steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. So that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the design. That's the design of God. That everybody be where they're supposed to be. I tell people, well, you're going to come to class? Well, I might come tonight. I, there's something else going on. I might go over there. Well, go on over there then. Bless God. Your blessing ain't over there. Your blessing is where God orders you to stay and stand. Doesn't matter who else is doing it. Doesn't matter who else is not doing it. The issue is once you come to understanding, then you take your place and you stand. And there are times, my dear precious brothers and sisters, where you have to stand alone. There's a place. Now let me say something to you specifically to this house. If I set someone in order in this house, that's me standing there, not them. And when you disrespect them, you disrespect me. When I set an usher at the front door, that's me standing at the front door. And when you disrespect that usher, they tell you to do something, I do what I want, I go and do what I want. You just disrespected me. You disrespected the kingdom. And everything works through headship. If, if, if I put somebody over a department and you have a problem with that person, you're supposed to go to that person and, you, and the Bible says if you're hot, you go and get it right with them. 70 times 70. Not disrespect them. There's no such thing as disrespect in the house of God. And, I, and, I, and I'm just going to tell you, some of you need to curb your little attitudes. Because it's not, it's not, you're not going to be, you can't have the favor of the Lord and be out of his spirit when you're dealing with each other. You have to be in the spirit. You have to talk to each other like godly people. And you have to have, somebody say, don't bring no drinks in here. You just bring my drink in here, but I feel like bringing my drink in here. You don't bring them in cathedral faith when you go over there. They'll tackle you. I guarantee you won't take them in there as you believe. No much over there will tackle you. But you can bring them in here. What kind of attitude is that? I'm not hearing nobody. In here, in here chewing on cookies and crackers? What you doing chewing on cookies and crackers in here? It's, that's just no respect because you don't understand where you are. But I have been prophesying that you do. I have changed my word over you. I am declaring that you're 100 before tithers. I am declaring that you're the mature of the Lord. I, 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 I'm, I'm declaring the answer. We will no longer speak the problem. That's what this is the end of this message. We will no longer talk about what we don't have. We're going to pro prophesy what's coming. Come on, somebody talk. I want everybody. I don't want anybody else coming up to this pulpit talking negative about nothing. If you don't have the answer, then it's not your time to preach. Let's talk about the solution to the problem. Let's talk about, come on, let's talk about the answer. Let's prophesy the word of God. Let's prophesy over your wives. Let's prophesy over your husbands. Let's prophesy over your children. Get up every morning, point to the mirror. I am the man of God. Standing on a solid rock, I stand. Christ, my rock, I stand. No other ground is solid ground. Glory to God. But on the rock, I stand. I send the word from the rock. I send the word from a foundation of the word. It cannot return to me void. It will prosper in the thing whereto I have sent it. God will hasten his word to perform it. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? The answer, not the problem. Say the answer. Say, I'm going to speak the answer. Say, I am the answer. I am the solution. I have the remedy. The remedy is 
the living word of God shall come out of my mouth like a devil-edged sword. It will cut asunder between my soul and my spirit. And when it makes distinction, I will not let my soul speak, but I will only speak that which is right in the spirit. Come on, talk to me. I'm a master over my words. I will choose my words carefully. They will bring grace and deliverance to those who hear it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on and give me praise. I will stand in my place. I will, after I've done all that I know how to do, I'm going to stand in the power of his might. I'm going to stand. I know my place, and I'm going to stand. Come hell or high water, I'm going to stand. I've got the armor of God, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. My feet are shot with the gospel of the preparation of peace. I got on the guard the girdle of truth. I got on the helmet of my salvation. And I'm standing with the breastplate of my righteousness. And because of that, no weapon formed against me or my family or my marriage or my home or my well-being is going to prosper. God, God is my refuge. God is my buckler and my shield. He's an ever-present help in the time of my need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, once you know that God has ordained you to stand in a particular place, listen to me, that's where your healing is going to come. That's where your deliverance is going to come. That's where your husband's going to show up at. That's where your money's going to show up at. In that place where he ordered you to stand is the place of your provision. Say, my provision is right where I'm standing. My healing is right where I'm standing. My deliverance, my deliverance is right where I'm standing. Everything God promised me is where I'm standing. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. My wife, my husband, my dreams, my new home, my new car, whatever it is that I need in the natural realm, I'm standing in the place where it's going to be delivered. It's going to be delivered. My bonus, my raise, my future is right here where I'm standing. I'm not on fixed income. I got my eyes fixed on Jesus. One thing fixed about me is my eyes. They stayed on him. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. I'm walking in my miracle. I will have my miracle. I will have who God says I can have. I am who God says I am. I can go where God says I can go. I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind. I become a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Ah, which is my reasonable service. I know the good and the perfect and the acceptable will of God. I'm not a 30 percenter. I'm not a 60 percenter. I'm a hundredfold return man. In Jesus' name. Woo, glory to God. Are you listening to the word of God? You're walking toward God and your legs are shaking. God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Where's the money going to come? How, how is this going to happen for me? And God says, just keep on walking. Because along the way, I will, I'm going to kiss you and the miracle is going to manifest. Because while you're walking towards me by faith, I'm walking towards you by grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. A miracle is about to take place.
place where grace and mercy kiss, something good is about to happen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I don't know. I, I, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen to me. I just sense that. I just need to do this. I'm not sure who's here that does not know Jesus Christ as your, you, as your Lord and your Savior. Is anybody here this, this morning that, that has not had the opportunity to come into salvation? That has not been pardoned for your sins? It's an opportunity to do that this morning. The, the, this, the, We're open for that right now. For those of you that don't know the Lord as your Lord and Savior, please come. Is anybody in this house that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ?